How can you overcome your limiting beliefs about finance and build a wealth producing mindset? Time to think like an investor. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Josh and today I want to talk to you about, you know, maybe the humanities of finance. Less about the hard math and the hard science of financial planning and investing and think more about the psychology because in my personal experience, if I think about my own life, you know, I had an experience in, in sports and in athletics where we actually had a pretty solid volleyball team. I was a volleyball player and we had mental coaches. Our team was competitive enough that we had hired kind of a mental training program. And what I found was early in life, I kind of got wind of these ideas of visualization or you know, opening your mind to thinking outside the box or getting in the routine of meditating or certain things like this, which might sound a little hocus pocus, but when we're dealing with financial planning, we're dealing with investing and how to do things like build freedom in our life or accumulate wealth over time or find meaning through our money, this requires not just a scientific math and science lens, we have to look at it from many different perspectives. You know, maybe a perspective of what kind of psychology or mindset should I have when it comes to investing or when it comes to finance. Now, one thing you might not know about me is that when I was in high school, I had gone into Google and I said, what is the highest paying job for the least amount of work? And I hit enter. And I, again, I don't mean to offend anybody who does this for a living or if your parents do it, but the number one thing that came up was pharmacist. Do you know anyone like that? And the reason I think it may have said that is because they make a lot of money and they make at least decent money and they don't actually do a ton of physical labor. It's mostly mental work. And I thought, oh, that sounds great. I'll become a pharmacist. I'll like do my four or five year degree and then I'm gonna make $120,000 a year and send behind a desk all day. That's perfect. But what I quickly came to realize, this decision of becoming a pharmacist had nothing to do with my personality or who I was authentically. Everybody around me, from my parents to my siblings, knew there's no way he should be a pharmacist. He should be, you know, doing sales or out with people. But in my mind, I thought, hey, small amount of work, large amount of money. That sounds like the perfect equation. But over time, I got so lucky. And I feel terrible in a sense because I think there's a lot of people out in the world who kind of get forced into a career path because it sounds like the right thing or because our schools and education system only really show us that there's maybe five or six different viable career paths if you want to be successful. But I feel kind of bad that a lot of people didn't come across the same resources that I did at a young age, which expanded my mindset around my career and around my money and kind of eventually took me from wanting to be a pharmacist to creating my own company and being an investor and getting involved with real estate and the stock market and building a financial advisory business where I help my clients do those sorts of things too. For me, one of the major things that I battled were kind of limiting beliefs. Things like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees and if you want to become successful, you have to work very hard and get a university education and, you know, get a great job with benefits and work your way up the corporate ladder. These were kind of the beliefs that I had in my mind of, you know, there's a template life that I have to follow and if I follow it well enough, I might become financially successful. And I think there's a few influences I came across that I really want to share with you to kind of bulletproof your mindset and your limiting beliefs around money. Things that will open you up to new ideas that might completely transform the way you see how you make money, how you spend money, and overall building a mindset that is more conducive to creating wealth. The first major influence that really hit me hard and kind of started to change the way I thought about money was a book called The 4-Hour Workweek and its author Tim Ferriss. And the title is kind of self-explanatory, but it's essentially exploring this idea, oh, okay, instead of looking at what is the career I can do and can get a degree for and that will maybe allow me to buy a house and support a family, think about what is the amount of money I would need to have every single month to have complete freedom? And now how can I build that by doing something I actually enjoy? This might seem very straightforward, but the idea here is this. There are an infinite amount of ways to make money and they are legit, okay? As long as you have value to provide, you can actually create some sort of business as a single person that can float you through life and create an income that is enough for you to live off of. And some of the great examples that I heard in this book were things like somebody starting a company where there was like rock climbing glasses, where they would allow you to put them on and you could see different angles. And it's like a cheap product you can build, put mirrors in a bunch of glasses, get them built in China or buy them off of Alibaba. 
and resell them online. And there was a guy in this book who essentially built an income up to something massive, $5,000, $10,000 every single month, just by kind of thinking of an idea and within a year marketing that idea. There was someone who was really good with musical instruments. They sat at home and kind of recorded a bunch of samples and put them up on like a stock music site where people can like choose background music for a video. And he ended up making $20,000 a month off of these little MP3s that he'd make because he could record music. And this book kind of just walked through scenario after scenario after scenario of people who kind of decided, no, I don't really need to necessarily get involved in the nine to five corporate structure. I can actually build an income stream over time as long as I'm providing value. The internet allows this to happen. I can build something that I actually enjoy doing. And I think reading the four hour work week and listening to Tim Ferriss on this topic kind of took me out of the mindset that the only way to make a living was to get in a career path that's already established. When in reality, most of the freedom in life and the financial reward will come from stepping outside of that template. The next bomb that was dropped on me that completely changed the way I thought about a lot of things, which was an old classic that people talk about a lot. You may have seen it before. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And it is a lot of hocus pocus. You may have heard of like the law of attraction or the secret, this idea that like, if you visualize something every single night, it will naturally attract you. No, I think that's kind of BS. It seems a little crazy, a little too good to be true. But I think that Think and Grow Rich is a fantastic book to get your mind working in the correct ways. Now, unlike The Secret, where you kind of just send out metaphysical ideas into the world and it rewards you back, I'm talking about a system where you're really actually influencing your subconscious. Now, in psychology, we know that like 95% of your brain power isn't conscious. It's not what you're actively thinking about. It's subconscious, things that are going on that you don't even understand, you're not even aware of, like the fact that your heart's beating right now or the fact that you're breathing. But the reality is, is that as a human, with your eyeballs and your senses, there are a thousand things you could potentially be focused on at any given minute. You could be focused on the computer screen in front of you, you could be looking at your phone, you could be looking around your room. There's infinite things that demand your attention at any given point. So your brain, knowing all of this, has to kind of use what you value or the things that you want to signal what thing in this room or what around me should I pay attention to. If you're massively hungry, you're going to see things different than somebody who is not hungry. Or for instance, you know, I'm with my buddies in the art capital of the world, which is Florence, and we have one objective. We're trying to find a pub. So we're looking around this whole town, trying to find a place to sit down with the lads and have a few beers. But in reality, if someone was in my shoes and they were very fascinated with art, they would think I'm a total idiot because I am in the art capital of the world where I could look and notice an array of beautiful different paintings and sculptures, but I'm seeing the world in a completely different way because of what I value in that moment. Now, this is a system in your brain called the reticular activator. If you buy a car, like let's say a Honda Civic, what you're gonna notice immediately after is that every car around you is a Honda Civic. You have something significant in your mind which is now pointing out other things to you that were always there, but are now more obvious to you. See, the crazy thing about this is humans, when we were building robotics and artificial intelligence, found that you know a robot can't really sit on an object that doesn't look like a chair, right? Like if you really wanna sit, anything could be a chair. This table could be a chair, the floor could be a chair, the hood of a car could be a chair, but for a robot, it can't understand that. It doesn't see values. Humans can see their values, the fact that I wanna sit or the fact that I wanna do something and act on different objects to get that outcome that they're looking for. A robot needs to see a chair in order to sit down on a chair. It sees a rock or a car hood and doesn't see that as something it can sit on. What I'm getting at is the way you choose your values and the way you influence your subconscious mind to point out different information in the world can actually lead you to the right opportunities. And if you're the kind of person who thinks there's not really that many ways to make money, it doesn't grow on trees, I have to work hard and work an hourly wage, that is what your life is going to present to you. It's going to present to you a bunch of different job listings for nine to five corporate gigs, which is not wrong if that's right for you. But if you're someone who wants to try and build wealth, what you need to do is almost train your mind or train your subconscious to value wealth and to value money and to point out to you things in the world that might be conducive to actually pursuing that sort of path. So Think and Grow Rich is mind blowing because what it does is it presents you with a bunch of different strategies for how you can use repetition and visualization and how you can actually take something that you really want out of life and start putting yourself on a path subconsciously to achieving it. 
That sounds hocus pocus. That sounds absolutely crazy. But me and many other people I know have had some success starting a company or have made some massive goal true used visualization, which to me, although there isn't science and there isn't math backing this up, it makes me feel as if there's something there that can allow us to achieve things. So I think the biggest thing that got me out of my box of, oh, there are certain things I can and can't do, or there's a certain amount of wealth I can and can't have, I started to use the teachings of Think and Grow Rich to expand my mind to really teach my subconscious that anything is possible and that I should pursue those things that lead me down the path towards my values. And the third and most recent influence that has really changed my thinking is the founder of AngelList, Naval Ravikant. And essentially AngelList is like the Kijiji or the Craigslist of startups. It helps you build and grow a company. And Naval Ravikant is a famous Silicon Valley angel investor. He knows a ton about startups and about building wealth, exiting companies, taking companies public, all this sort of thing. And he writes about it. And the beautiful thing about Naval is he's kind of like a mixture between an investor, but also a philosopher. And he thinks through life and meaning and all these different problems outside of money, but he also combines it with having financial success and having built many businesses. One of the greatest things I learned from Naval was that it isn't necessarily just hard work that allows you to create wealth. I mean, that's kind of the prevailing notion. People who are very wealthy work extremely hard. Elon Musk works like 24 hours a day flat out. Bill Gates didn't take a day off for like the first 10 years of his career. Jeff Bezos is always working on these different projects. Very, very wealthy people work extremely hard and they sacrifice a lot. But Naval has a different perspective. He believes that, well, you know, the person working at the corner store or, you know, the grocery store down the street, that's a mom and pop establishment. They work just as hard as Elon Musk. They work just as hard as Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates. Why is it that some other people get substantially wealthier? And Naval says it's all about leverage. It's not about how hard you're working. It's about what levers are you using to magnify your gains? And he breaks it down into four different types of leverage. Labor, capital, code, and media. And essentially what he's saying is if you want to actually grow a business, you have to use something like labor. You have to hire other people to provide value on your behalf. You have to get capital, maybe outside investment, or you have to borrow money or take money in from investors to build and scale something that magnifies your returns. That's the leverage. You could use code, which is like software, because software is something that you build once and can sell millions of times. By leverage, what I'm really talking about is where can we put in a small amount of effort and get out a massive amount of gain? Bill Gates builds Microsoft software one time and he sells it millions and millions of times. So there's tons of leverage there. And lastly would be media. You know, if I put effort into building one video and a thousand people watch it, well, that's kind of like an a thousand to one leverage. I put in the work once, but there's a thousand people who watch the end product. And if you can think of someone like Joe Rogan, you know, he puts in a couple videos a week and he gets millions and millions and millions of views. So there's just massive amounts of leverage. What makes somebody wealthy or not isn't about how hard they work or what path they pick. It's more about where are they applying leverage at the right place in the right time. So for me, going from wanting to be a pharmacist to actually building a business where now we're utilizing leverage, we're hiring people and we're taking outside money and we're using YouTube and you know trying to use software to make things better. I feel like now I'm using leverage and I'm building something that is more authentic to me as opposed to kind of shoving myself into a job that I thought would have been right for me before. And I'm using these ideas like Think and Grow Rich where I'm constantly thinking about what my future values are and how I can work towards those. And a lot of the time my subconscious points out things that are the correct path. It allows me to open one door and close another because I see and my subconscious knows what my values are and presents the world in that way. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Those were the three resources that allowed me to take a massive shift in my life and eventually put me on the track to somewhere where I feel like I'm building wealth and I'm getting ahead of my career and those sorts of things. So I wanted to share that with you guys. But anyways, if you got any value out of this video whatsoever, make sure to hit that like button below to support this video. Hit subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.